And so it came to pass that the glory of Bethesda was shining because of Christ's intercession. John 5. So after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And there is Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which called, is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel had gone down at a certain time into the pool and troubled the water with blessedness sent from heaven, so that whosoever would step in first after stirring of the water would be made well of whatever disease he had. And so this was a small picture of the greater miracles that were to come. And because this foreshadowed the glory that is the, the healing charity and the uh, restoration that the Lord brings uh, all that desire, um, it was a time to, to celebrate for the true uh, glory of the Word of God would become most evident, especially in these last days. And the Lord knew this um, because uh, the glory of the latter house is greater than that of the former, and the first are last, and the last are first. And He knew this. And um, so behold the uh, images, uh, just punch in new Jerusalem, NASA, and this is what you will see. It is a NASA Hubble telescope picture of the new Jerusalem on the edge of the universe. Well, how could that be when it's not supposed to, uh, anything is not supposed to happen about that till the end of the Bible, right? Well, the first is last and the last is first, people. So even though it was written in the last of the word, it happened first because the first is last and the last is first. Christ said that many times and to understand prophecy, the truth thereof, that must always be well understood. So, but one thing's for sure, the glory of Bethesda with the healing power of the Lamb, uh, our great physician, it was then engaged and it was in motion and the Lord's love was in motion. And so let therefore the wild fires of his peace blaze away and let it make many hearts anew, said the spirit of prophecy. Then and only then shall truth all of a sudden come forth as a volcano of faith, energize the word of love to such a point that it shall be the energy of uh, all, all the volcanoes of the world erupting. It'll be uh, the energy of the Big Bang even before it made the first sound. It'll be the small, still voice of peace within all peacemakers. Great would be the volume of his hope that he would speak forth. And his wisdom of life would end up becoming gloriously manifested within the midst of the stupidity of death and the utter foolishness of letting one's light of love to go out. So Jesus sang new praises unto our Father. Then that Son of Wisdom greater than Solomon spoke a new majestic song of praise, even though it was he alone that was our majesty of majesties. And so he exalted the glory that is and was and always shall be, the merciful love within his exact likeness, his spitting image. So he lifted up his velvety voice unto the Most High Lord, and he offered our living Lord of love, the sons of all people who were with him. And the word of God's generosity was more than justified since the Father had given all men unto his keeping. For this was the reason why 
our carpenter of the ages, why our Holy Father gave mankind unto his living hand of life in the first place. So it came to pass that that man from uh, Galilee uh, in Jerusalem, so that he could stand witness to some of the goings on of the angel of uh, the cherub of Beth Bethesda and the healing that would flow there. So it came about that uh, he came forth and he knew that in pursuing the divine, those seeking healing there, and he knew he was going to heal them all anyways after, but he knew that everyone there about seeking, if they knocked, he would open and they could receive his overflowing joy and had their souls possessed by his grace, his living love, and take unto themselves the everlasting blessing, which has always been the eternal life, uh, eternal life of love, a gift given, bless, a blessing from everlasting life, whom Christ always has been before the beginning was. So it came about that our pride of Jerusalem set unto the obedient amongst earth's lost souls, the ones committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, heresy of turning off their love light to begin their walk of perishing in the land of the walking dead. And unto those resounded his word through his word of prophecy that all people walking the road of lovelessness should cast out all fear and let love cast out all that has been opposed to love, for love only desires only more love. And there is no darkness but ignorance alone. So he knew that uh, the obedient, the ones that would want to shine like the stars, uh, as Daniel 12 uh, foretold for the latter days, those who would want to walk in the glory that was Bethesda, that was now fully engaged and ready for great miracles at hand that all of those uh, of obedience walking by loves and forgiveness is brightest light, that they would avoid all dark ways of corruption coming near to themselves. So the Lord offered himself un as love unto the loveless. And so be it that our uh, root of David, by his spirit, he told all generations as a living testimony of his own word that he would enter into hearts uh, asking for love and that he would set them free and he would bring them forth from out of perdition and by his grace and his mercy, his uh, inheritance of the kingdom age would be guaranteed to go before them so that make all people wise in the ways of truth so that they will not be destroyed or perish as it is foretold in Jeremiah 31. And because of the grace of God, his sons from everlasting shall evermore be announcing unto all people that by his means of love, him as the flowing charity, as the uh, fully engaged and enraged ocean of his adoration that was would sweep all souls into its midst that only that love alone his beneficence of his magnificence uh, his splendor of remarkability alone would be able to uh, let him cause others to be justified and sanctified and set apart by his love to become ever more blessed so therefore the Lord God, he whispered into the wind of the spirit of prophecy that would be poured out upon all flesh in the days of the, this latter day Daniel, in the days that was foretold by the prophet Joel of God pouring out his spirit upon all flesh of love and appreciation because we are the highest creation that he has made. So the Lord a roaring lion of Zion. He calls for all people of love to become a pride and let down your mane, put on your love hat. And it's time to hear the word of God. 
and he says, I am your judge, and they who have put me on as a pure white robe of love and holiness shall never be injured or found cast out of my, my presence. For those who love are born of God and know God, because God is love, First John 4, 7. And Lord says, and my chosen ones walk in me and are under no condemnation if the light of love is on. Crystal clear, no more shall anyone need to uh, be looking through a glass darkly. That is obsolete now. And uh, so the Lord spoke through his spirit as the grounds of Bethesda began the boiling over unseen in the spirit realm with those pools, those crystal clear pools of Bethesda becoming a flame with his passion of healing. Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and he was the great physician getting ready to stand up to take a great bow from and for all that were seeking his benevolence. For he shall cause all seeking love to trust in his loving name of love but he spoke through his spirit through his eagle of the eons his most regal one that gliding dove of love who is now coming forth to pour out god's message of love that um, within this word of his passion the holy spirit speaks that um, it comes forth for me and for uh, those of my house for sons of death can now die and let life long live and arise. So it was time that fate would be tightly sealed and people in the end would come to realize the prophecy has never been told to tell the future but to change it. And so it was destined to come to pass, the debtors of our Rab Rabboni, of his father's temple, uh, there at Bethesda's pool, would be rising up against all those who had been debtors, and they would divide his spoil, even though nothing was due unto them. And it was predestined as well that Jesus Christ Almighty, Isa Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah of all mankind, believers or not, it reigns upon the just and the unjust, that he alone would endure with his supernatural peace and know that the, that savior of all obedient people of love would additionally always be fated to stand unshaken like a firm rock, which has always been beaten by the waves, never to disappear. And that rock of ages would uh, be fated and destined to conquer and endure all throughout the ages in spite of such vile waves of violence that have been slapping down upon him as hard as possible because his love has always been misunderstood. So furthermore, he knew in these latter days of hope as those flaming um, spiritual happening at Bethesda's pool was getting ready to consume whoever stood within the mighty wake of our living water uh, who came forth as an ocean of his own uh, adoration for one and all of us, always having no respect for people, loving them all equally. And so it came forth that he knew that uh, they would be predestined to hear um, the truth that would turn everything around for his light of love was divine and it would be flowing always in the midst of darkness to redeem all of his people. And only then would such be able to inherit their beneficent God sent illumination of peace for the kingdom age which is now upon us. And nor would our great I am ever find his word ever come in void due to love shining of his living promise for that most high father of lights he then and there back at Beth, uh, Beth, Bethesda he made an oath uh, that would stretch across all time that was reflected well in the everlasting new covenant of the kingdom age of Jeremiah 31 33 to 35 and he knew that it would stretch his oath unto the faith filled fathers such as 
Abraham was. For the Lord was then delighting in hearing that their children, the children of Zion, the children of Israel, would inherit all of mankind, Isaiah 54, in the day that the covenant would be given unto them and all of mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. For the Lord God has long declared, I am the Lord God of all mankind. And people have forgotten that truth. Everyone divided him, and we have nothing but desolate heritages, Isaiah 49, 8. So let us arise with that eternal salvation of their seed, of Israel's seed within all of us. And let all of God's elect therefore offer a sacrifice of the highest praise unto the glory of love that was all over that cherub of uh, Bethesda's friend of truth, uh, who shall always be bright and ruddy and red apparel when coming forth in the glory of his radiance, the magnificence of his beneficence. Uh, while he's treading the winepress in Midian. These are the days for the glory of God to cover the earth as waters covering the seas, as grass covering the lands, as uh, sand covering even the most desolate of deserts, and snow covering all the mountain tops. His glory of love is evermore. So raise up your eyes, said the Holy Spirit of prophecy, and gaze now towards all angels of fascination as that glorious creation, that cherubim of the messenger of fire with the twirling sword uh, at the pool of Bethesda, ready to heal at the Lord's whisper and command. And he knew that uh, the day was upon all men when his glory would evermore just reveal all so that all would understand the wisdom that they could shine as, as they quit looking through glass darkly. And so let the children of God's adoration now worship he who has always let his most angelic praise and the exaltations of the cherubim, seraphim, and the ophan and angels be, become as precious crowns unto the snow-white hair of our Lord's everlasting love. He is our everlasting Father who has a blessed crowned head with the diadem of splendor of his own creation. So worship he that is the Father of stars and the star of stars. We are his stars. And the glory of God, all the creation, has been groaning with great expectation for the revelation of who are the sons and daughters of God. It is written in Isaiah 45 of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters of God and the work of my hand. Command ye me as Daniel did, says the spirit of prophecy. And in that moment I was writing by a lamp that was never plugged in, an electric one for seven, eight minutes. It happened to Trudy too, my, my departed sister, into glories, into love's passion. And I'm envious of her, trust me. But one thing's for sure, that the glory of love goes before us. So worship then our Father of stars and the shining of the star of stars of blaze, who created such a wonderful angel as that angel of Bethesda's holiest pool. For so shall it always be that such angels of his brightest healing light evermore shall live uh, while pointing all men towards God's life incarnate. So rejoice and be most glad, all children of his pleasure. And behold, with awe, the four cherubim wings of that creation in the garden uh, that normally and always commonly covered the animal faces of a cherub, along with their shocked faces of a man. Let it also now be seen in this vision of his glory upon that angel, that cherubim. Uh, behold, his four wings that cover his feet. Stand amazed, therefore, all of God's children, uh, and behold the ageless blessing that he brought through love's holiest ways as that cherub embraced his peace and would surpass all understanding of men uh, and bring forth blessings too far too many to ever list for all that could embrace. So condemnation 
shall befall all unbelievers of love. If anyone turns off their light of love, they commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the heresy of letting their love light go out. So let great woe abound unto all non-believers of love and those that will not believe in the preordained angelic promise of Satan's removal in the days of the latter day Daniel, as Daniel 12, 1, 4, 12, because the first is last and the last is first. And with that, telling you, Bethesda pool, it was like a livid star sapphire in the desert and the spirit it it it, it, it the, the the charge the electric charge of christ's most passionate love was there uh, brought forth through his own word he had gone to jerusalem for this reason to to move his hosts his angels all surrounding that area and the overflow of bethesda would come into his hands and into his fingers and when he would extend his fingers in the spirit there was rays of, of uh, supercalifragilistic expialidocious light going out from his fingers most radiant uh, forget Charlotte's web he had uh, a, a sign over him Jehovah Nisi was the banner of love over him and that's what it said and it invited all weary and tired of the animosity and the hatred and the unforgiveness of the world to come to bridge over to love because he would bring them to a world of peace that they had never yet known so come with me because it's time to leave the safety of the shore and go out to the deep uh, i am the bringer of the deep and um, the lord said who shall come and feed uh, the master's household meat while the master is away and he foretold the Elijah task servant of Isaiah 49 for who wasted all of my all of my time in vain Christ never wasted one word of his even in Gethsemane when he prayed most passionately for our oneness of uh, the brotherhood of love to arise at the end as it shall now even when he prayed that he knew his words were not a waste because he knew his kingdom age covenant of Jeremiah 31 33 to 35 would be given by his messenger of Malachi 3 1 that would prepare his way by his message he is not the messenger of his covenant he has a messenger that goes before him and that message is this he says to one and all with open hands to those that can receive he says I shall be your God you shall be my people I shall forgive all of your iniquity and I shall never remember it removing it as far as the east is to the west and the Lord God Almighty he looks into each of our hearts and he says and I will write my law and my love upon your hearts upon all people and all shall know me from the least to the greatest and no one shall need to be taught of me anymore so come along unto that deep because that is the deep that is waiting out with me and he is the treasure of excellence and the excellence of treasure let us not no longer be afraid to embrace that truth as we let his everlasting gospel of loving hope resound around all the world with eyes awoke unto his passion of peace